Hey y'all. So a lot going on today. There was, oh, I'm talking about the Johnny Depp and a turd uh, trial going on. Okay, so today's Monday and May 2nd. And there is, um, there has been three witnesses so far. The first, first one was Travis and he had the long white beard and he was a good witness for actually he's been probably the best witness as like hands-on seeing how a treated johnny but he was also a witness to some of johnny's bad behavior and um i feel like most of us are going to be like team johnny team johnny and kind of forgive everything wrong that he has done so just to put it out there a lot of his behavior i wouldn't consider like I wouldn't really want in a relationship necessarily and I wouldn't say that it was acceptable. Um, I think the bigger point is that A.H. may have very well lied about some very serious accusations. So that sort of, you know, overshadows the things that he's done wrong, <laughs> okay, because he's no angel and he does do things wrong and he's not perfect. Um, and I think a lot of times, you know, we can idolize movie stars and stuff and just forgive everything they do wrong because we're like well what, they're a movie star and who cares because we're not actually in a relationship with them and we don't have to deal with them day to day we don't have to deal with any of their flaws blah blah okay it's just her flaws may be slightly more severe considering she's possibly lying about something super terrible and and like he said like johnny said he's like these are criminal accusations and things that he could definitely go to jail for if they were true <clears throat> so that's what's super terrible about her accusations like if she's just straight up lying about a lot of this then it's just so wrong and then it's like kind of cancels out all the wrong he's done so basically the travis guy is i believe the same travis that you hear referenced in one of a's audios where she's making fun of johnny and telling them to go do stuff um, and like, oh yeah, call Travis and, you know, so he can rescue you and all this stuff and like putting Johnny down about calling Travis when they're in a bad situation, when they're fighting, which I think it's very acceptable for him to call his bodyguard if things are getting out of hand and he needs to leave the scene or he needs to even just like for his own self to like calm himself down if he's feeling out of control, like, okay, I need a third party because it can get wild. So, um... Anyways, Travis spoke to a Red Bull can being thrown at Johnny's back from like a second floor type deal where I'm guessing it's like a balcony and you could see down at the, the next floor. And so he was a witness to Amber actually throwing it and hitting his back, which so far everyone's kind of like coming in the middle of something, coming at the end and never really seeing what happened. So I thought that, that was important because he actually physically saw it. And then he also physically was there when Amber punched Johnny in the face. Oops. Eh. Um, so I'm not very popular, so I'm sure I won't get canceled because nobody cares about what I'm saying. <laughs> but, um, so that, like, I feel like it's a huge thing because all of those stories were very like, and did it actually happen? Was there any witnesses? Did anyone actually hear it or see it? Or is it just A's version of the stories, you know? And then Johnny trying to defend himself. So that was super important because the bodyguard said that he went in between J Johnny and A and um, I believe he's actually telling the story that A told in her deposition um, when she's wearing that white shirt and it's like you know I don't know what part of my body I put in between him, him and I blah 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 like because I'm pretty sure this is the same day if not it sounds a lot like it where they're on the stairs and A thinks Johnny's gonna push his her sister down the stairs but she punches him instead and like saves her sister, you know, and like that big story. So that's like a huge story that she's been using. So if in fact, <laughs> as Amber's lawyers always are just, like love to say, in fact, you did not know this. In fact, if the bodyguard actually put himself in between Amber and Johnny and Amber reaches around the bodyguard and punches Johnny, then that completely just destroys her story. You know, and I mean, who has more of a reason to lie? Like, obviously, they both can't be true because, yes, somebody was in between her and Johnny, but it wasn't her sister. So, 
but her sister was there. So I really hope that they have her sister testify. They probably won't because it's probably kind of mean to do with family, but I mean, Johnny's sister had to testify, so might as well get her sister in there, but she would probably like make her lie and then she could go to prison or whatever. Um, so anyways, those are some important things that Travis, um, you know, was a witness to. And he did also say, and this is why I brought up the fact that Johnny's not perfect and that we might want to look over things, but in reality, in the real world, we would not want this behavior to happen to us. Um, so I guess after the Red Bull can was thrown, then Johnny went upstairs and started like throwing down all her closet stuff, like her giant penthouse, just full of just her closet stuff, like just clothes and shoes and blah, blah, blah. She's spoiled. So he started throwing all that down and I've had that happen to me. It is scary and it, it, really made me upset my clothes were thrown on the stairs my clothes um were you know just like dumped all over the place and whatever and to me that was like a violent day in my life and I tried to call for help and I got the phone hung up on me so yes that can be very scary um but in this case where I was definitely not the aggressor but A is, and she's already thrown things at him and punching him and stuff that day, to get your clothes knocked over is pretty mild. You know, like, that's the least she deserved, <laughs> in my opinion. So, no, his, his behavior is not okay all by itself. If you were just looking at, like, wow, he just destroys her property. That's terrible. But if you're looking at, like, okay, she's been verbally terrible to him, she's been physically terrible to him, and... At his wit's end he's thrown over her clothes yeah it, it does seem like okay well that's nothing compared to this you know so depending on which story of or version of the story is true that was kind of important because I didn't even believe that I thought she knocked over her own clothes so to have an actual witness tell the truth that I mean hopefully he's telling the truth um, a middle person like kind of explaining what really happened is super important I think for the jury because then it kind of because Everyone has two sides to every story, and then if you can have a middle person that kind of saw everything, yes, he might be a little biased because he works for a certain person, but also, like, he doesn't have as much motivation to not say what really happened. And he's been blunt and honest about Johnny. He's not totally protecting him. He's just like, yeah, dude, he was ticked off. Yeah, he was verbally, you know, throwing things, like, verbally um, insulting Amber or whatever, like, saying the F word or or, you know, verbally, loudly speaking back to her. <laughs> okay, so he's not like totally just trying to smooth that over and he's not, to me, didn't seem like he was super trying to protect Johnny either. I feel like he was being pretty fair and saying whatever he perceived to happen. Um, and the fact that he has a lot of instances where he heard things or had to come rescue Johnny and stuff. And I feel like that speaks volumes to someone if, if Johnny's asking for help and he was the one beating someone up, I'm sorry, but you don't call for help for that. <laughs> Unless he had this grand master plan to look like the good guy, there would be no reason for him to call for his bodyguards if he's just smacking someone around. He would not want a witness for that. He would not want someone to walk in at the wrong time and be like, oops, I just knocked her out. Like, I'm sorry, but that's just logically doesn't make any sense. If, if on several, several occasions a different bodyguards have been called or texted to say, hey, come over. Hey, I need to get out of here. Hey, I'm trying to leave. That does not sound like someone who's just bashing people around. Okay. That is. My people that I've been involved with would never want to witness to that stuff. Never. Because no one ever knew how this person was until I had to escape. <laughs> Okay, no one would have ever known. We were very good at hiding it. So, trust me, someone who is actively, like, being an abuser doesn't want the witnesses. And maybe A does because she wants a sympathy party. She may want witnesses just in the nick of time where she's crying and all upset and like, how could you do this? But even listening to the audio, you could tell how easily she manipulates things. He'll be like, dude, then let me leave. Say goodbye. And then all of a sudden her voice changes and she's like, stop pushing me, Johnny, stop poking me with a stick and like, stop pushing up and pushing me up against the wall. Like, do you like that wall, huh? You like that wall? And he's not actually doing it in that moment. 
but she's like trying to paint this audio version of like what she wants people to think he's like when he's like just let me go I want to leave I don't want to talk to you anymore <laughs> so I can only imagine the you know when you're around people that are trying to manipulate you mentally that you do lose your mind like it is not it's not always possible to stay calm and to stay rational and to stay okay in your mind when someone's mind you know what in you to death you know and it, it's very frustrating because when you're not with like a truly like sane level-headed person it gets exhausting speaking from firsthand it's exhausting you literally get so bogged down with what they're saying and you start believing like am i a monster like i don't even i don't even know i don't even know how to be in my own body when i'm with this person because they're so crazy and they make you think things that like you know are not real but they keep saying it so it's like is it real am i the crazy one you start thinking you're the crazy one when you know you're not <laughs> okay you're not the fight starter but they will make you feel like you're the fight starter so anyways that was a big rabbit trail. <laughs> um, the second witness was Jack. He worked for Johnny as a um, like one of those agent people to settle deals for him and try to get movie deals and blah, da da. His stuff was kind of like, all right, move this along. Um, just because it was like a lot of legal stuff and blah, 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 paperwork and whatever. But I feel like the important part for him in his testimony was that um but <laughs> okay so the big important thing to get away from him I feel like is that it is true that Johnny didn't get any deals from like the time the op-ed came out the one that he's suing Amber for and that's like another big like oh, you know like this is showing proof if you will that what he's suing her for is valid because after 2018 when the op-ed came out he could not get any more big movie deals now i think he's done i feel like he's done more movies since then though but i think he he was saying after i'm a mata or mary mata or whatever that one movie's called like he didn't get any more after that and so it's tricky because some of the movie dates that say like when they came out could be 2018, 2019, but they may have filmed and had the deal already way before that. So that can get really tricky on how, how to prove like, well, he had a movie come out in 2019, so it's not true that he didn't get any more deals. That may have already been recorded, done deal, paid for and all of that before this all, you know, happened. So that's where I feel like. Um, the jury might get really confused about the dates and like, is it true that he lost all these deals? Um, because yeah, so he, that agent, the Jack guy was saying that he didn't get any more deals after the op-ed came out and that Disney didn't want to work with them. And through so many words, he obviously couldn't say those exact words because A's lawyers kept chiming in and it was super annoying because he couldn't get a, a word in edgewise <laughs> like i was like shut up and stop objecting just like let him answer something like all the questions were like here's it objection objection <laughs> and so and it was like this is the main thing like how do they i know that they're not wanting him to say these words because it would completely like solidify or justify the whole case but like that is why they're there is about the op-ed so if he could if he as a witness could prove that yes he had all these fallouts because of this op-ed then it's over you don't even have to talk about anything anymore you don't gotta bring up you don't even have to bring up a because blah blah um because he's suing because it affected his life and i mean i guess yes they would have to prove that he did not do all these terrible things if the only thing he did was knock over some closet things which the bodyguard was like he he rearranged her closet <laughs> which is a very nice way to put it um if all he did was rearrange her closet but the sexual allegations aren't true which i have not heard yet where they're proving that that happened and what day that proved that happened like i don't i don't even know what dates those were like if she has an actual story she's gonna give us or like is that just thrown in the mix like hey on top of him beating me up i'll just say he did this to me too oh that's a lie i did hear about australia when he got his finger chopped off i think that's the night that she said he he beat her up and did bad things with a vodka bottle to her and i was like really i just cannot see that happening <laughs> like her story just seems 
Yikes. And yes, there's a lot of things that people do to each other that are very inconceivable, but they actually happen. But it's just knowing what we know and knowing how A tells her stories in court. <laughs> It's laughable. It's like, you're an actress? Well, you're doing a very bad job at making me believe you. Because normally I, I believe people. Like, I'm a sucker for making people happy and I'm a sucker for believing stories. And I just couldn't. <laughs> I just like the stories that she tells. I'm like, really? That's just, I don't know. Uh, I know too many people like her that you're like, you can kind of tell when they're lying. So, anyways. Um, then the next guy, the third guy today for Monday... I don't remember his name, but the older gentleman that's been a lawyer for like a thousand years and he was describing each job that he's had and I don't get the relevance to that except for to just show maybe how credible he is in the industry and how credible as a lawyer he is so that it's more based off like his, he has a huge building blocks of lawyerness and building blocks of entertainment life and we just broke for lunch so we don't know why that's so important, but Johnny's Lawyers is, you know, doing the whatever the first talking <laughs> on his side on Johnny's side and so yeah they basically just laid this giant foundation of how long has he gone to school and what jobs he's had it was kind of long and tedious you know where you kind of tune it out and you're like crap I think I missed something important but you know I'm just like making my bed and doing laundry and doing the dishes while I'm trying to like hear everything and it's so hard to remember everything because a lot of these details are super long and boring no offense, but um, I'm sure they have a point. <laughs> they just have to get to it someday. And thankfully, they're cutting through these witnesses a lot faster instead of having one witness for like two days. But I did hear rumors that A should be on the stand this week. And I should not be so excited. <laughs> but I really want to see her in her best acting that she'll ever try to pull off. Like, I, I really want to see it. And, okay, I have to say this because I feel guilty. Okay. Because there are a lot of victims that don't get believed. And there are a lot of victims that get, you know, a blind eye turned towards them. Like, I'm in a movement myself about blind eyes. And how um, we need to bring awareness to things that actually happen that nobody believes. And that it gets covered up or swept under the rug. And that is really scary and sad. And, um, you know, and, and there was a lot of men in my life that were like that. That did cover things up. That didn't care about the victim. And that victim shamed them and you know humiliated the victim instead of the guy that did it to him but what's also true is that men can be victims and that men can get you know manipulated and that men can get hurt physically emotionally sexually at lots of different ages just like women can um i'm not saying we're like perfectly equal in in any way because men and women are different and don't even get me started on all that stuff I don't want to hear anybody talking about it. <laughs> okay, sorry. Say what you want, but I'm just, like, not trying to get into that crap. This is not political. But it's just, in this case, it appears to be that Johnny is the victim that's getting a blind eye turned towards him. And that he was the one that was, like, more victim shamed. And he was the one that lost things because of this, not A. And if... You know, only the good Lord really knows what happened in every single instance and who led to what and, you know, what evolved and blah, blah, blah. And there's just so much to it that a, a lot of what she says might have some truth to it. You know, he might get loud and he might get scary and she might actually be afraid for herself. But the problem is, like, if she's the instigator and she's, like, firing him up, firing him up and doesn't know when to quit and won't let him leave her to calm himself down then is it necessarily his fault for losing his temper? Like you can only be pushed too far, so far before you lose your mind. And if you're not even, you're being restrained and you can't even leave the situation that's making you crazy in the first place. Like how, what does she expect? You know, like I'm, I'm obviously not for abuse, but like people can only be pushed so far. We're all human. Like we don't, we can't always control our emotions. So we have to really work at it you know we have to really try and train our brains to not go to violence we like since we were little think about how all the kids in the nursery had to be you know sent home for biting a kid or something you know every every kid can come out swinging biting screaming crying that's like our natural instincts we have to train ourselves from a young age to not do those things okay so it's some some of this is just getting so out of control <sighs> My belief is that like everyone 
if people don't get trained from a young age how to cope with anger, how to cope with all your emotions in a healthy way, they never will. And clearly, A was not trained on how to cope with her emotions in a healthy way. And maybe Johnny was not either, con considering his background um, and her background. Like, they both had similar things happening. So, anyways, rabbit trailing. Everyone has to really intentionally live right. And we have to intentionally make good choices. We have to very much intentionally try not to hit, kick, scream, punch, and all that stuff. Um, it does not make it right at all in any case. Um, but I'm just saying, we're all humans and I wish I knew the truth. So I just, I can't wait to hear from her side, from her actual lips and not just like watered down rumors that we've all heard. Um, so yeah, I'm sure neither one of them are perfect angels, but in this case, I really believe that A has manipulated the situation and made things worse for herself and Johnny more than it ever needed to be. So, holy cow, I've been talking for 20 minutes, probably back on. Okay, bye.